Liberty University is one of Lynchburg's largest employers with more than 8,000 people now working for the school. With 15,000 students on campus, it also provides a huge boost to restaurants, housing, and more in the region. Tonight, we continue our in-depth look into Liberty University's future. WSOS 10's Jenna Zipton talks with Jerry Falwell Jr. about controversy and why sports may be the big key in the university's expansion. Liberty University's risk was worth the reward going into online education when other schools weren't. The university's money grew rapidly because of those programs, more than 1,000% in the last decade, from $150 million to $1.8 billion, allowing the university to grow too. The, the way that Liberty was a pioneer in adult education allowed us to achieve those that original vision for Liberty and decades rather than centuries. It probably would have taken many generations to do it the, the traditional way with contributions and alumni support and all the things that, that schools usually uh, are built on. But Liberty University President Jerry Falwell Jr. knows with more online competition, the day is coming when there will be a drop. So he's preparing now with a goal of a $3 billion endowment. Compare that to Notre Dame's $10 billion endowment pool. But his goal is to be the evangelical version of Notre Dame or Brigham Young. To get there quickly, the school's invested in athletics, $200 million into new facilities, with the hope of having high-ranking sports programs like Virginia Tech or UVA. It sounds like sports is the big key here. Sports is a way that you can make big positive changes quickly. You know, academics takes longer. With the facilities, you can do that pretty quickly, you know, if you have the resources. It takes time for, for your academic achievements to gain the recognition of, of your peers. Hiring a controversial athletic director, former Baylor athletic director Ian McCall. But controversy is nothing new for Liberty. Provost Dr. Ronald Hawkins worked with Jerry Falwell Jr. and Sr. Dr. Falwell Sr. was a very outspoken preacher and he said a lot of things from the pulpit. Uh, that, that, you know, were very, very truth-based, and some of them were opinion-based. And he could say rather inflammatory things at times. Falwell Sr. was known for many controversial statements, although Falwell Jr. hasn't been without his own controversy. Recently supporting students carrying guns on campus and backing President Donald Trump during the election. He is not afraid of taking a risk. He's not afraid of being unpopular. I mean, he just is willing to step out, and he became and has become for many a kind of a controversial figure. But Falwell Jr. knows he has to lead differently. You have to be a little bit more risk-averse. We've worked so hard to create what's here. We don't want to lose it. We don't want to do anything foolish with the uh, financial resources. So we've, we've worked hard to make sure that we've continued to put more and, money, more and more money away for the future every year, even with after all the construction. That's also driving growth in the city of Lynchburg. The city manager says there's no question Liberty's impacted the entire success of the city and region and is thankful the university's here. The impact that higher education can make on a community is phenomenal. And we're seeing that all of the time. They've been able to partner on infrastructure projects, including the pedestrian bridge over Wards Road. And Liberty's real estate portfolio includes local properties like River Ridge Mall. A lot of people say that Lynchburg without Liberty would look a lot like Danville or Martinsville. And that's probably true. And it's, um, it's sad what's happened there with a lot of the jobs that have left. And we're just glad that Liberty was, was able to, to grow at the right time to replace all the factory jobs that were sent overseas. He says the major building expansion is over. Now there will be a shift to building better programs and students. We've started turning away a lot of students simply because we don't have room. And I, I expect that trend to continue. Up to now, it's been more of a focus on quantity, but I think from here on it'll be more of a focus on quality. The students on campus come from all over the world. More than 60% are from outside Virginia with 79 countries represented, including Korea, Canada, China, and Vietnam. Jenna Zibton, WSLS 10.